had the great fortune of being the XO of the top hatters during the uh, Kosovo crisis. And during that, during that period of time, during Allied force, the entire air wing was focused around the capabilities of the Tomcat. The Tomcat had a lantern targeting pod and had, for about five years, experience with it and had trained the people into how to use that, that targeting pod and was very capable at performing the air-to-ground mission. It was a, a transformational shift, not only for the, the uh, community and also the airframe, but also for naval aviation because we had a capability that the Strike Eagle, the F-15E Strike Eagle had, and no one else had. And uh, it was really a significant game changer for the Tomcat. During Kosovo, there was one particular mission that, that really kind of stood out. If I can give the background, the, uh, the Air Force was up over, uh, working over the northern part of uh, Yugoslavia. The Navy was given Kosovo as its primary area of interest. And there's a little country called uh, Montenegro right off the side. And there was an airfield that supported aircraft flying over and um, uh, striking innocent um, civilians. And they were the ones that the, uh, the U.S. and the NATO forces were there to protect. And we would see them come over the border and we did not have authorization to go into Montenegro. The situation was such that you had this airport or this runway and you had a, a um, bunkered hangar facility inside the, a mountain. And so they'd pull out of the mountain, they'd launch, they'd strike, they'd come back and they'd go back inside the mountain. So they were never out in the open. And we got, we got presidential approval to go in on one strike. And there was a 24 hour period that we were able to do this. Um, it was offered to the Air Force and the Air Force declined. They didn't have the time necessary to, uh, to do the planning required to pull off this strike. And uh, Mad Dog Copeland, who was our battle group commander, pulled everybody together, the CAG and all the strike leads, and said, what do you think? Can we do it? And we all said yes. And so we accepted that mission, and the strike lead was given to a Tomcat. And the whole air wing was built around the Tomcat lead, and the fact that we could bring a, a 2,000 pound precision penetrating weapon, the GBU-24, and that would be able to penetrate through what was an air conditioning duct into this hangar facility and be able to destroy what was in it. We had the precision capability and we had the weapon. And the strike, it was an alpha strike. Every airplane that was in an up condition, we launched. And we had four waves of, of uh, packages going in over Montenegro, which was heavily defended with SA-6s, which is a nasty weapon. And, uh, and the prowlers were shooting harms in to suppress the, uh, the surface air threat, and the Tomcats were leading each of the four elements. And by the time we came through on the second wave, missiles had made it into the air conditioning duct. And as we were approaching it, you could see the effects of what happened when that got in there. It ignited an enormous firestorm that blew out these big heavy steel doors, and so everything that was in there was absolutely destroyed. And then all the other targets went out after that. And the Navy, within a 24-hour period, was able to get every, everybody in there, everybody out, destroy the target. But the Tomcat led the way, and the Tomcat had the only capability that could have pulled that off. Uh, so that I'm very proud of. Uh, on, the, on the more entertaining side, the, um, uh, the Tomcat had, obviously, it was single piloted. You had a pilot in the front with flight controls, and you had a Rio radar intercept officer in the back, and he had a, a control stick, which was kind of like a mouse on a computer. It was a, a control stick. It can move a cursor. And um, one day, I was, uh, we were doing some operations with the German Air Force, and I was fighting a MiG-29, and I had a German in my back seat. And so after the dogfight, we were flying back together, and uh, I asked the German if he wanted to fly the airplane. And he was ecstatic at the opportunity. He said, I didn't think we could, you could fly from the back seat. I go, well, actually, you see that stick? I go, we have, a, we have a, a, a control mechanism that if you go half action, if you pull the trigger halfway, uh, I can, I can, lock, I can uh, uh, transfer the controls back to you. Um, what he didn't know is when he went half, half action on the trigger, I'd see a little cursor on my radar display. And so I could see where he was pushing the, the stick. And uh, so he, I got them all set up, and we're flying right on the wing of the MiG-29. 
And uh, I go, okay, your airplane. He goes, my airplane. And as he moved the controls, I moved the stick and was going back and forth and he was flying nice and ca uh, carefully. And I did a barrel roll around the MiG. And I started yelling at him. I go, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he started panicking. I didn't know I didn't touch a thing. I go, well, hang on, I got the controls. And I get the controls, I get right back into position. And uh, I go, okay, it's very sensitive. So you gotta really be, be uh, careful with how you move the controls. He goes, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do that. I go, you wanna try it again? He goes, yes. And so I let him do it again. I flew carefully for a little bit, very smoothly. And then again, I did a barrel roll over the uh, MiG. I yelled at him again. He goes, oh no, I don't want it anymore, no more. <laughs> I never told him. I never told him that he wasn't the one flying the airplane. But I got a kick out of it, even though he probably didn't. <laughs> if you're new to this channel, please ring the bell and become a subscriber so you don't miss the new episodes.